powered by Virginia. Radio. What's good? What's good, everybody? We back. Power by Virginia Radio. New episode, Loud Facts TV. Today we got a special, special guest in the building. We got a Hampton legend in the building. My man Donovan Bradley, you know what I mean? Owner of the the hottest, the best breakfast spot to eat at in the whole Virginia. Not just Hampton, but the whole Virginia. You know what I mean? You got to go over there to Faridas and try the breakfast and the lunches because they are the best. Loud facts. But um, we here to tell his story. Let him tell his story today, man. Let him know, you know what I mean? We call this episode from business from prison to business because from what i know of my man he was in prison for a long time but now he's been holding down the businesses for a long time so he went from prison to business real quick on him man introduce yourself let him know let him know about you let him know something special about you man my name is donovan i grew up in hampton and fevers um i came home uh june Next month, June 9th, it'll be seven years. I came home June 15th. Been home seven years. Okay, okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome home seven years, man. We need to throw them an anniversary party, man. Because you know how easy it could be to go right back in there. Shit, I just threw me a 50-year <laughs> 50 year party. That was the first party I threw in a, in a minute. Word, word, yeah. word. You got to celebrate. Yeah. You put a you lot of work in. 51 time. Yeah, yeah, you've been putting a lot of work in. You got to celebrate. That's what's up. Um, I want to take the people back to man to to the start of your, your um your life and growing up in Hampton and um what it was like for you. Um, let us know. No, I grew up in Phoebus, and as you know, back then Phoebus was predominantly black, so you know uh, there wasn't a lot of white kids up there, so it was a little hard on me. Grew up, you know, pretty poor, but um, you know, I started getting in trouble when I was like. Hell, I don't know, sixth grade. Okay, okay. And then, uh, you know, skipping school, drinking, smoking weed. Cigarettes. Growing up too fast, you grown. Yeah. yeah. By ninth grade, I'd already been in a group home, uh, PMI, stole a car, went to New York. Word. <laughs> ended up going to the detention center. So when I made it ninth grade, I was only there for like two months. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to Beaumont. Stay in Beaumont for uh, a year and a half. That must be some type of correctional um Yeah, for juveniles. Yeah, for juveniles, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I came home. Uh, I was 18. I got my GD while I was inside. Mm -hmm. And I started college. I was going to Thomas Nelson. And, you know, Cracker just hit. Okay. Cracker had been around just for a minute. I didn't know nothing about it. And uh, I got tied up in it. Starting. It's the 80s. Huh? It's the 80s. The late 80s. Late 80s, yeah. okay. And um, I got hooked on it for like a year and a half. Okay. You know, you know, I thought I had a heart attack doing it, so I quit doing it. So by this time, I lost my job. You young. You just only 80, so you, what is you, 20 years old? Or uh, 19. 19, 19 years, something like that. Old, yeah. yeah, so I lost my job, lost my uh, old lady, lost my apartment, lost my car. Yeah. Everything, so I had to move back to mom's house. Yeah, and so I remember I was sitting there, and Scarface came on. Oh man! And I said, it can't be that hard to sell drugs. I'll just do it long enough to make the money back that I jacked off last year and a half. Oh, well, thanks. I did that in a month. Wow! And you know, growing up as poor as I did, I never got a taste of that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, I went from Pookie to Nino Brown in like no time. You know, complete opposite from going. You know what I mean? So. I should have stopped, but I just traded one addiction for another. It went from drugs to money. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I'm just doing my thing, doing my thing until the boys came and got me, you know? Uh, how long was that? How long was you be, was you able to do your thing before they was able to be able to get well, you? Well, I feel in the state, you know, in the state, it's different. Um, yeah, I got a little slapped on the wrist in the state. Okay. And I came back home, you know, I didn't learn my lesson at all. You know, so I went right back out there, 100 miles of running. Didn't last long at all. And then they, um, 
they uh, uh, stayed out about six months, mm -hmm. and they uh, locked me up again, and I ended up representing myself. Yeah, uh, I just got my trial transcripts I about two weeks ago. It was crazy. Okay, yeah, tell us I, about I, that. I, well, uh, so you know, I was on out like six, seven months. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was back out there selling drugs, and that, and when they got me, you know, all my money was in the street. So I gave uh, uh, a known lawyer around here a nice little chunk of money, and um, and I put him in their hands. I could tell he just wasn't doing what he always did in the past. Okay, I didn't understand why. Uh, later on, I found, you know found out why. That was so. Anyway, I, I fired him in the middle of the courtroom, and uh, told the judge he was gonna put me an attorney. I said, no, "I'm gonna represent myself." So of course he gave me a psychological eval because uh, he thought I was crazy. And for the next year, I just studied law every okay. day. And you know, I had people in the in the in my cell, my my jail cell as jurors, you know, practicing in front of them because I did everything. Right, right. So I went to trial. I beat everything. I had, a, I think it was seven charges all together. I beat everything but a scale. Wow. So I just got those transcripts uh, about two, three weeks ago. That was what it was called? A couple of weeks ago. I didn't know they still had them. Wow. So I've been reading them back. You know, like the prosecutor, he passed away since then. And court reporter passed away and everything. But mm. that was crazy. I, I was retarded to even try that. I just got lucky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I don't like talking in front of people to begin with, you know, even doing a radio interview. So mm -hmm. for me to have to stand there and be my own attorney, you know what they say, a fool for a client. Yeah. But uh, by the grace of God, I beat, I beat everything that would have gave me forever and yeah. got found guilty of a scale. So. Okay, okay. So they sent me away for two years for that. The jury found me guilty uh, of uh, simple possession because they said it was powder on a scale. And when I came home, I just went hard. I didn't think, you know, I could be touched because, yeah. you know, what I did. Right, right. And, um, you know, then uh, the federal government got me. Okay. And that's a different animal when they get you. Right, right. You know? More time involved. And it's a whole lot. They, they know a lot more. They, they, you're not going to beat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to beat them. You know, in the state, you got enough money, uh -huh. you know, you you can beat almost anything. Yeah. But in the feds, they print the money. You ain't, you're not gonna win. A lot of facts. When it says you're not, when it says United States of America versus you, yeah, you're so, done. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay. So they sent me on a nice long vacation, and um, during that time, I guess it was in uh, 2009, I was in the hole for a year, and uh, the crack law had changed because I had crack in my case. Okay. And uh, it reduced my sentence some, so I, I knew I, I was coming home sooner. And I said, uh, I said, you know, I didn't have nothing to do for a year. So I sat in there and there were some other partners of mine. I was down in Louisiana. You know, you get to go to wreck one hour every day in a cage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, dudes be in the cage next to you. And it was like, do you ought to write a book? Because you live a, you know, a wild life. I never thought about writing a book, but I had nothing to do for a year. Okay. So that's when I first started up, writing that first book that just fell on the ground, uh, uh, Throwing Rocks at the Penitentiary. You remember who inspired you? Who was it? Who was it that inspired you to write the book? Uh, Twan Dunlap. Twan, shout out to Twan Dunlap. You Twan I mean? Dunlap and then, turn my uh, man into an author. And all of them follow. All of oh, them follow. Books are, uh, <laughs> and um, a couple of other cats that was down in Louisiana with me. So when I wrote the book, when I got out the hole, you know I couldn't smoke for a year. So when I came out, matter of fact, it was this book right here. It was this one. So uh, when I got out the hole, I worked out for the air, lost about 30 pounds, couldn't smoke, so I, I, cha I changed uh, my thinking process, and um, then I started writing, you know, I said, well, I wonder if I could come up, because this book right here is based on a true story, you know what I mean? Okay. So What's I the name of that book? What's the uh, name of that book? Throwing Rocks at the Penitentiary. Throwing Rocks at the Penitentiary. So I said, I wonder if I could just come up with a story in my brain, and then that's why I came up with the idea for my next book. And then, as I was writing that book, I had an idea for another book, and then another book, and so, you know, it was kind of therapeutic, because, you know, I'm playing basketball and poker and all that. Writing gave me an out to take my mind off of all the time I was doing, because when I was writing, I had to put myself in a different, you know, I, I'm in a different area, because it took me like a, it didn't, I just didn't write a book in a week, it took me like a year to write each one. Okay. So, you know, I gotta sit there, I got ADD, Mm -hmm. So I got to sit there and put Make myself in a different 
make it work for you. Yeah. <laughs> the best way possible. Yeah. So I never thought I'd write book one book, much less five. That was crazy. Right, right. You know, but sometimes God throws you in crazy situations. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. To yeah. slow you down to do what He wants you to do. A lot of facts. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm just glad that you're one of the ones that been able to figure it out. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we moving so fast we don't even get to figure it out. Well, you know, it took me forty years to That's, figure it out. Yeah, I understand. Me you know thirty five, like and two what three trips to prison. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It took me three trips to prison because I was hard headed. You know? Yeah, that, definitely. You know? Definitely. We um, we we, we learn our lesson. Life life teaches lessons in, in some mysterious ways, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And some of us like like you said, we so hard headed that it took us years and years and years to figure it out. And there's so much easy. There's so much legal money out there. You know what I mean? The energy you take selling drugs or whatever. If you just find something, anything that you have with decent at. And put all into it. You gonna make you'll some succeed, money. You'll succeed, and you ain't got to worry about looking over your shoulder. The people coming to get you. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just you know. And you and you able to grow like selling drugs. You able to grow, but you're not really able to grow because in, in order to grow, you got to do your your taxes. And selling drugs, unless you're laundering some money, you really can't do your taxes like that. You can't say I made a a million dollars over drugs this year. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, right. And selling drugs, you ain't going nowhere anyhow because That's you're what, walking dead, man. See, people don't understand. Uh, and I try to explain that's the reason why I wrote this book because I don't think people understand what the feds is you mm -hmm. know what I mean it, it, it you're a walking dead man break it down to you're, walking, you're on the street and because I, like, I didn't think because they never caught me with nothing mm -hmm. you know what I mean I mean they found uh, a bunch of money in a house they couldn't use and a bunch of weed in another house they couldn't use but they don't have to catch you with nothing loud facts you know what I'm saying while you're on the street all your boys when they're getting hit off the, you, you, you're dead yeah, you know, it's like a man walking down the street, getting ready to have a heart attack. Don't know it. Yeah, you know what I mean. They, he they he has no building, idea. Building on you. Yeah, he has no idea that he's dead already. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. You know, back in the eighties and nineties, it wasn't like that. But you know, later on, just their system whatever. wasn't like that. They built their system around that yeah, time. Yeah, damn sure and, did. And, and, and the laws that they created. Yeah, you know what I mean. With with the new stuff that they gave us to keep us down. You know what I mean. But there's a solution that if you don't get into it or get out of it, you ain't got to worry about it. Loud facts, and that's, that, the, that's the best way to and, beat you know. It. That's uh, the best way to beat it. Yeah, you know when I wrote that book, I was in my feelings because how they got me mm -hmm. and all the things they did to get me, even though I was guilty of some of the stuff they said. You know what I mean? But they had no. But they, they blow it up. You know what I mean? If you were getting one brick, you're getting a hundred bricks. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you if you got a body, you got ten bodies. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it, they blow it up, and, they, and you know you can't sit there and say. You go to court, oh, no, I only have one key. You know what I mean? When somebody puts 30 keys on you, you know what I mean? Right, right. Or, you know, so you just can't win, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you, win. You, you, you know win again. I'm hard-headed. I was one of the most hard-headed people you ever meet. Yeah. And I know you can't win, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? And the problem is, you know, I mean, I get it because I grew up that way, too. I didn't know what I wanted to do with life. Okay. Didn't have no, I didn't have a uh, father figure for real, and I, I didn't. No, I was always told I wasn't worth anything, so I had low self-esteem myself growing up because okay. of my childhood. But, I mean, all you got to do is find anything. He was cutting grass. You know, like, so I got the restaurant when I came home. Okay. okay. Now, what, what year um, was that? Uh, 2015. 2015. Well, I got the restaurant in 2016. Okay. So the money from yeah, this... Yeah, I moved here, too. The so the money from my first book, right. plus somebody personally loaning me some money, I bought the restaurant. Wow. So... You know, I had that for five, six years now. Yeah. But like landscaping, last year I opened up a landscape company. You know what I mean? I didn't know nothing about it. I just cut grass. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But if you find something that doesn't take a lot, and you can make money off of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Any and everything. People everything. selling dirt. You can sell, you sell dirt, yeah. yeah. Trash, you know what I'm saying? They're cutting dirt now. <laughs> cutting dirt. <laughs> They're cutting dirt. Man, you think I'm joking. We went to go get some I dirt. The you. dirt's cut. Yeah. They done took the dope game and put it in dirt. dirt. Yeah. You can't even get real dirt. Am I lying call? Maybe we went to go get some dirt. The dirt was cut. He said the dirt was cut. They cut so, everything. So, the, <laughs> so this is the second year with the landscape company. You know, the first year was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, it made money, but, you know, yeah. now this year it really, really took off. You know what I mean? Okay. I got seven apartment complexes and that. Wow. And it's just from working hard, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People would think, it, it, you know, people would say, oh, he still does what he does. No, I go to work every day. Loud facts. Every day. Every day. And that man will tell you over that. I go to work almost every single day. You know Loud what I mean? Facts. I've been doing that for seven years now. I haven't took a vacation or nothing. I need to slow down a little bit. 
But you know, people, you know, people always assume things. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I drive a nice car and this that's because I go to work every day. Yeah, and, and plus our experience, bro, what we've been through and the things that we did in the past. Some 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 people know we can't make them look at us no different way. No matter the, what we do, they always gonna look at us like he's still doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, but so, I think you know, I think the stigma over the years of people that have been locked up has is not as bad as it was. Because, you know, a, a lot of people that come home do good, uh, you know, in, in it, it, uh, there's a lot of people, and I ain't talking about just me, you know, there's a lot of people that come home and do something productive with themselves. So, and there's so many people that are felons now. There's more millions. So I think it's, you still the stigma there. Yeah. But I think it's not as bad as it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Right, right. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you got a felony on that, you're not getting a job nowhere. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And now there's so many people that are felons. Yeah. And everybody knows somebody that's locked up. I think that has uh but you right to still that stigma, you know, especially if you known for doing something for so long. Yeah, yeah. In the back of people's mind, you know, oh he ain't gonna change. You, know you gotta saying? look He's, at us. We we th we talking about thirty years of forty years of, of, of fucking up to our five years of doing great. Yeah. Of doing yeah, better. True. You know what I'm saying? And we gotta look at the weight right there. We we know for a fact our bad weight hold more weight. But we can't even let that hold us back from being better. You know what I'm saying? So we got to know for real, for real, our good weight, you know what I mean? All these positive things and all these changes we making, that's what it's all. They ain't even about our past. You know what I mean? Our past making us to the point where we don't even go back to our past. Yeah. And people can think whatever they want to think about us. But like you said, we go to work every day. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We wake up morning and night. You know what I mean? We working. And that's how we able to open up these companies and build yeah, opportunities uh, for our you know, people. Oh, he's, he still has some of the old drug money. I came away, they had nothing. I mean, right, right. nothing. They seize everything I had. That's what the feds do. You know, when I came home, I purposely walked from the halfway house all the Applebee's every day. Mm -hmm. That's where I had a job at. And that's about an hour and 15 minute walk. Wow. Because I don't want nobody saying, oh, yeah, you know, uh, remember I used to give you rides and all that. You didn't do nothing for me. Right, right. You know, don't get me wrong. If it was raining and I'm walking, somebody will stop me, you know, that knew me. I bet, yeah, I'll catch a ride. But most times I just walked on my own until I got a car. You didn't even want to be affiliated no more or not that even put that on, like, it, like you're thinking yeah. different. Yeah, because, you know, you know people, when they do something for you, <laughs> then they bring it back if you know Oh, loud facts. Yeah, you know how that is. Oh, you know, remember what I, I did exactly this for you? I remember you, I did that for you. No, you, I don't remember none of that. Because when I was locked up, you didn't send me no money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you know, when, that's why when I wrote this book right here, that was my second book. Come on. You know, when people get locked up, mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're dead. Yeah. They're dead. I mean, a lot of people don't send you money. You, you just forgotten. Yes. But then when you come home, everybody's all in your face. Hey, what's up? What's up? You know what I mean? Where were you at all this time when I was gone? Yeah. You know, people that I messed with, when they were locked up, I took care of them. You know what I mean? I sent them money. You know what I mean? You know, but, answer but, the phone calls and stuff like that. Because, you know, that's before I really knew how it was. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I says, uh, uh what's it say? Out of sight, out of mind. Okay. You're all you got. Because yes. inside, you know, majority of the time, you're by yourself. You know what I mean? Facts. You know? So, you know, it's embarrassing when you go in jail mm -hmm. and, you know, the feds sees all your money, you're dead broke. And people are like, man, you should get money. How come he can't go to the store? You know what I'm saying? So you got to hustle inside like you did on the street. Run a poker table. Make wine. Do legal work. Run a store box. All this and other to eat. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I was making about three or four grand a month inside. You know what I mean? But, you know... It's just, you know, but when you're in the street, you took care of all these people. Then when it's your turn, you, you, you dead. You dead. To them. That's what it is. And, and then and, when you get home, you know what I mean? A lot of people die in jail because they, cause they are dead. You know what I'm saying? But you you didn't die in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, in jail, you were still bringing in three grand a month. Yeah. You were still, you know what I'm saying, surviving, maneuvering, you know what I'm saying? And building because you became an author in jail. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So... Like, if you never went to jail, you probably would have never became an author. No, if I didn't go to prison this last time, I'd been dead anyhow. You know what I mean? Wow. I wouldn't because I wouldn't have quit smoking cigarettes. I wouldn't have quit drinking. I was a bad alcoholic. Wow. I was super, I was like 40 pounds overweight. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, that, I was supposed to go. Cool. I was supposed to lay down for a long time. You know what I'm saying? That was, if I didn't, I mean, that was the best thing that ever happened. Okay. Sounds as crazy as it sounds. For real. So at at what point did it did everything have to like come to a change and was was it like during the times of writing the books or what made you want to just like completely change? So I was in a USP Pollock and this is probably uh, two thousand eight. That was back then. That was the worst penitentiary in the United States. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in a federal system, um, 
So I'm down there with uh, John Gotti's brother, the head of all the organizations, like GDs, all the heads. And I'm sitting in a hole for a year, and my sentence had got reduced. And I just said to myself, you know, I said, man, I can't keep doing this. Okay. I ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Because before then, before I went to hold in, I'm smoking, I'm drinking all the time, stabbing people, acting like a retard. You know what I mean? So when I was, when I sat in there for that year, it was like I had a lot of time to reflect, a whole lot of time. And um, that's when I decided to lose some weight. I started writing that book, start my change of thinking. This is the first book? Yeah, the first book. You okay. know what I mean? Not saying I was perfect when I got out the hole, but I never went back to smoking anymore. And that was a hard thing because I started smoking when I was 11. So you gave up smoking at this point? Yeah. And you start working out? Yeah. Okay. I, I need to get back to working out again, but yeah, I messed my do. shoulder up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I, you know, I need to lose about 20 pounds. But when I came home, I was like, you know. Okay. But, um, and that's when, that's when I started changing my thinking, you know what I mean? Because God gave me another chance of life. And I said, you know what, D? I said, you know, it's time to time to change your thinking. Word. You know. Word. Definitely, you, you definitely switched it up for the better, man. I'm 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 super proud of you, man. That's why I come eat at your restaurant and, and show you love. Oh, I, yeah, I appreciate man. it. I mean, you too. Look yeah, at you. You got so, this. Yeah, yeah. You do the shirts. You do. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah Ain't nobody no man. different. You know what I mean? It's just no different. Yeah. You know, yeah. it. I what I like is it gives us a platform mm -hmm. to show other people. Mm -hmm. That road we was on, what we did, and people that had never been, you know what yeah. I mean. You ain't got to keep doing it that way, you know what I mean. You no, can, facts. you can have a radio station, you Anything, can sell shirts, you, you can do yeah. this, this, that, and other, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that's the key, man. Yeah. I think that the key is to, to get the people to do something that they love to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Because Selling drugs, I mean, that you just a drug deal, you know what I yeah. mean. A hustler yeah. can sell yeah. anything or do anything, exactly. Yeah, drug dealer you know can't know? do that. Right? No, I mean, you know, I, not, not to say bad, you know, people, a lot of people sell drugs. They continue to sell drugs because they don't know how to do nothing else. Facts. Learn how to do something, something else. else. That's yes. it. Yeah. Learn to do something else. It ain't no different. You buy a gram for forty dollars and sell it for one hundred. Buy a t-shirt for uh, four and sell it for twenty. That's all. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Write a book. You know, like this for the rest of my life. My books every three months. Amazon sends me sends me royalty checks for the rest of my life. Come you know, on. and look, and it shows me where each book was sold. Come on. Like in China, I might sell six books. Come on. America I might you sell, can sell like them a, worldwide, a, a thousand. man. You can sell them in places you're not even at. You can't. Exactly. How you gonna do that with the drugs? You nah, know what I'm saying? You gotta you have. Can't. You gotta have a. Unless, team. unless you are uh, uh, El Chapo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're El Chapo, you could do that. But look where El Chapo's at now. Yeah, he got the hot underground and shit. Yeah. They, they got his ass. Yeah, they got him. He, he got enough to build underground tunnels and shit. You know, yeah. most, most niggas don't got that type of money. You like that? <laughs> most people don't got that type of money. Um, man, um, the second book is where you really, you know what I'm saying, figured out that, you know what I'm saying, you dead in jail. How about a third book? That was, uh, what, what was you know, that? this book right here, I got this off of uh, that rap song by Walking the Track one day. Never heard it for uh, 24 Hours to Live by Mace. Oh, yeah, come on, that's what I said. So look, so... Uh, uh, that's why at the cover you see this dude getting chased by the clock. It's called okay. Two Days in a Wake Up, right? Okay. Because okay. all through his life, Jesus talked to Ethan in his dreams. Everything Jesus ever told him came true. Okay. So one night Jesus shows him his tombstone, mm -hmm. and it's three days awake. So he wakes up. He goes to the doctor, and the doctor tells him he's got stage uh, four lung cancer. He don't know how he's still alive. Wow. So convinced he's only got three days to live, he gets a stopwatch. What would you do if you know you only had three days left to live? But, it, but it's crazy so that's All my a, books That's a whole story right yeah, there Yeah but, but it's crazy All my books I hate reading a good book You get the end of the book mm -hmm. And it's like You already know What's gonna happen Or you're like Wow really All my books at the end You're like man What the hell You know yeah. what I'm saying I don't yeah. wanna give it away But it's it, So that That was the third book I wrote Okay Okay Dope dope story Yeah that was Ethan was crazy Have you ever thought about Turning one of these books Into a movie yeah, the problem is I came home and I never invested any time in a really marketing them like I should. And that, like, if I told you like the storyline on this book here, like yeah. I really I just, think I just seen a movie with that. I, no, so this one right here, I really think uh, maybe like twenty years, thirty years after I'm dead, somebody will read one of these books and be like, man, and turn it into a movie. You know, like artists, painters yeah, who ain't famous right, afterwards. Yeah, do that well, I mean, it could be fifty years, or it could be before that. So this book right here is about a con couple, right? Uh -huh. Greed loves. That's me when I had hair. That's for the fans got me right. So it's a picture. Okay. Uh, uh, um, it's about a con couple. 
But man, it's crazy if you read the story. And the last book I didn't even realize I didn't have here is uh, uh, I was the last book I wrote. It's got the pandemic in it. Okay. It's not about the pandemic. It's about a doctor who gets obsessed with not want to die, so he wants a cure for everything God throws at him. So it's right. called Man Plans, God Laughs, because we can plan all we want. God's up there just laughing at us, because really? He can change it anytime He wants to. So the cover of the book is the main character sitting down playing chess with God. And God's just sitting there like this looking at him laughing. He got the angels over God's shoulder and they're just laughing at him. Because they're like, you know, you can't beat God. Nah. So, but, I mean, it's it's a wild book, though. I mean, it's, I don't even know where I get the idea for these books at, though, for real. <laughs> they just come. They just come. Yeah. yeah but, I, I mean, you know, when I write a book, I never know where it's going to go mm -hmm. or nothing. But as time goes on, it's like, seen a tunnel and then I start pushing everything. That's why it takes so long to create them. Yeah. That's it. That's Especially it. when you got ADD like me. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I, I think I would have to create one. I think I got the ADD too. When they was in here explaining that one day, I was like, yo, that's me all the way. So I would have to create like the same way if I was going to do it. Like yeah. That. So it was easy for me to write inside because I'm in a cell. Okay. You know, I'll get away and I'll just like an hour or whatever, I'll just put myself somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, since I've been home, it has been easy to write. I got four more books I want to write, but you know, with all the business, it's kind of hard right now. Okay. I want to write um a book about uh, panic disorder, anxiety disorder. Okay. Because I've had that since uh, I was twenty, I think twenty. Okay. You know, because there's a lot of people that got it, and you know, they feel alienated, and I've been dealing with it since I was that age. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, a kid's book, Leo the Lion. My, I got a little doll. You see his little dog. I got him from my ex, right? Like, you know, I'm pits and all this. Dog. Yeah, dogs on it, but it's just big, but he thinks he's a lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, wow. so I, I want to write a kid's book called Leo the Lion, the dog who thought he was a lion because uh, he thinks he's a pit bull for yeah, real. For real. Yeah, and then uh, 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 a part two to this because the way it ends, I left it for a part two. Okay. And then everybody said, I don't know how you do it, but everybody said I should write a book of, even though this is my life story about what's happened to me since I've been home. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, how you write a part two to your life? But I don't know, you know, as far as, because, you know, this book stopped me walking out the door. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So in the seven years since I've been home, everything that, you know, how God, had, everything I wanted has come to me in his time. You know, I always wanted a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my books, he introduced somebody to me because I didn't know how to publish a book. You know, he put somebody in my life that helped me publish some books. Come you know what I'm saying? Come on. I had a restaurant getting ready, but, you know, the feds came and got it. It was illegal money. Mm -hmm. Boom, here. Here's a restaurant for you. You know what I mean? So, it, it, was you Was you heavy in the Bible? Here and there. So, you know, I, I need to get back into it more. I go to church, but I don't go because my restaurant's so busy on Sundays. Now it's hard is, for me to... It's this hard is, for me this to, is a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was a, I was a, I was a heavy in it, but you know I believe uh, in God. Okay, okay yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was never heavy in the Bible, you know. What I mean? But like you said, I believe in God. I believe in God. Yeah. But like the same way you can get like yo, how do things carry your life. You know, that's the same way they come in my life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's the same exact way. But I, I, I you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I feel you on that. Because it doesn't do no good to church, and then as soon as you leave church, you back out there doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and you know. I'm not saying I don't go to church. I'm not saying I don't sin. We all sin. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, you know, I definitely believe in God, for sure. All facts. You know what I mean? All facts. Yeah, for sure. I'm with you on that, 100%. There's, there's no other, you know. Because none of this means, no at, at the end of the day, <laughs> a, a restaurant don't mean nothing. These books, I mean, don't get me wrong, books are the thing I'm most proud of because when I'm gone, okay. 100 be, years now, people can read a book and get a laugh facts. off me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, money, none of that means... I mean, I had yeah. plenty of money at one time. You know, the most important thing is your mental health and your regular health. Come on. You know what I mean? Because if, you ain't, if you're not... What are you going to do? The rich, be the richest man in the cemetery? Come on. You can't take it with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I I like to hustle and, and I, a strong work ethic, but I'm trying to move away from that and put some more balance of normal time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of working so much, take my hours back. Because yeah. everybody calls me a workaholic, and I am. But you right. got to have more, I got to have more purpose than just, you know, being at the restaurant every day, landscaping this. I know that's why I'm trying to step back more so I can write more books, try to do more things that help people in the community, All right. stuff like that. 
Yeah, but you position yourself to be able to to, manu- to move like that because not anybody can move like that. You have to set yourself up to be able to move like that because, you know what I mean, in life, you know what I mean, you got you got bills. Yeah, well, you, I you still know, got, got bills. We all got bills. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. people don't, though. Some people, well, some people just living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't really got, but you have a lot going on. And now when you have a lot going on, you know, you got you, you build your, your different streams of income. You know what I mean? It, it gives you more. More, more went in basket. That's true. Yeah, so that you can maneuver better. You know what I'm saying? And you can maneuver more comfortable. Like, if you want to go take a trip and write a book, you'll be able to go take a trip and write a book. You can put yourself in a whole other, you know what I'm saying, saying, environment. You know what I'm saying? And, and build. Some people can't build like that. You know what I mean? No, they can. They just, you know, they just haven't figured a creative way to do it yet. Figured out how to yeah, do it. What, what the, whatever it is. You know yeah. what I mean? You know? Yeah, that's why that's why I had to get you in here so we can um show people because I, I I like your story just to remind me of my story like I didn't do all the time in jail but you know what I'm saying the way you broke down how God gave you and put things and made things happen is the same way I break it down you know what I'm saying so not out of the Bible how we how we talked about it you know what I'm saying but just saying our, our experiences you know what I mean and um I had to get you in here because that that was dope that that came out you feel me mm-hmm. I, I peeped that early <laughs> so um. This this new business that you have got into, um, that you just started two years ago, and this year you say it's it's, it's, it's going better. Um, the landscaper business. What's the name of it? Uh, Bradley Landscaping and Designs. Okay, okay. So, um, your guys is out there, and they are just doing the, what do you call them? Complexes, or they are doing. Um, well, we you know we branched out. We do uh, uh we got the. the uh, seven apartment complexes, but we do other stuff like okay. uh, pavers okay. for like uh, like driveway pavers yeah, or yeah. patios, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. irrigation systems. You know, like if somebody has a, a drainage problems, yeah. we put up French drains down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, matter of fact, my main man Carl over there, uh-huh. so he's one of my workers. Uh, 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 what's going on, Carl? So him and a uh, 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 fellow guy that was in prison with D Nice, rest in peace. Okay. He uh, passed away last year. He they taught me into opening it up. Okay. You know, okay. and he just came home from prison. And, you know, I didn't know nothing about that for real, for real. I just, you know, when I was a kid, push a lawnmower, that's about it. But there's a whole lot more to it than just pushing a lawnmower, you know what I mean? Come on, come on. Because, you know, really, it, cutting grass, you don't really make that much money. Because even you charge $50 a yard, by the time you get to the yard, yeah. unload it, yeah. cutting this, that, and another, and you pay your workers, it's not, but it's all the other stuff that we do is where you make a comfortable living off of that. Okay. Dope. But I tell you what, it gets hot out there in the summertime. I'm gonna, oh, le- I'm gonna leave that to them this summer. <laughs> I was out there all day summer in that heat. Fifty years old, it's not. No, I thought I was gonna have a stroke a couple times. I'm not lying. Because he passed away, D Nice passed away, oh, man. and Carl had to move, so I was just stuck. And I, I got a young kid, twenty years old, and it was just me and him for the whole summer. Wow. So that was uh. That made it happen though. Yeah, we have made it happen. It's still there and it's growing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the we best made part. It, like, we made it happen. Sticking in there no matter what. Yeah, I mean, it was a learning experience, you know. Mm-hmm. Just like anything, when I owned a restaurant, it took me years to learn, you know. But you learn a lot better ways of doing things, you know what I mean, over yeah. the years with experience, you know. experience. Yeah, of course, you know. That's t-shirt. It sure is. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You ain't lying about that, you know what I <laughs> mean. Yeah. But you don't get it if you don't put the work in. That's, That's the whole thing, you know That's what I'm saying? It. Yeah. So, um... Anybody, whatever, whoever out there watching, you know what I'm saying? This right here is from prison to business, Loud Facts TV. You know what I mean? Um, my man is in the building today. You know what I'm saying? Um, so since you've been home, man, like um, for seven years, right? Yeah, next month will be seven years. June 9th. You don't forget the day you leave. Okay. You don't forget the day you go in. That's the only two days that matter. The first day you go in and the day you leave. Everything else... You just leave it there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I no so. matter no matter if it's a month or, or twenty years or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Behind me. The only two days you remember is the day you go in and the day you come on. <laughs> That's it. This is is a vacation that you don't wanna be on for real. Yeah. Um since you've been home, man, um, how many people have you employed? Oh, I don't know, probably. Seven years. Oh, about. That's not. Uh, uh, I mean, restaurant business is, is a high turnover, anyhow. Okay. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know. Probably about sixty people, fifty wow. people. Wow. Maybe. Wow. Because the restaurant every year has gotten busier and busier and yeah. busier and busier. It's been around for fifty years. 
Yeah, and you do community probably more than fifty too. years. Oh yeah, yeah. For uh, yeah, a lot of community events. Yeah, that, and that's a good thing because at, at Thanksgiving, you know, we feed everybody. Uh, uh, not just the homeless, but you got military that has nowhere to eat. You know, because they're from out of state or elderly people, and nobody cook for them. Mm -hmm. So we open our doors, and every year that's gotten bigger and bigger for Thanksgiving. Okay. And then Christmas we do a tour drive, and that's gotten bigger and bigger every year. Wow. First year it was like eight hundred something tours. This past year it was four thousand. Wow. Yeah. So every year that drive gets bigger and bigger. That's big. Yes, that's it does. You know, with COVID, it was drive through this year because usually they could come in. See Santa Claus and you know get the present and the stuff stocking, but uh, this past two years I, I think it is um, they had to do the drive through, yeah. which made it easy in a way because your line didn't go because it stretched all the way past food line. You wow. know where food line is, yeah, and it'll be cold and they're out there in the cold waiting all that time. You right. know what I mean? So with the drive through, they just come right on up. Santa Claus and the Grinch will come up to the car. Whoa. You know, find out how many kids there are and what ages we go in, the presents already wrapped up, boom, boom, and then drop it off to them. So. That's dope. That's dope. So that's going down. Thanksgiving this year, Christmas this year is what, the 4th or 5th? This will be the 5th or 6th. Si I can't yeah. remember. The 5th or 6th yeah. year yeah. we've done it. Um, any other events you do besides those two um, events? Um, and, a, and a and we do a, a tour drive. I mean, a, a tour, a school drive in the oh, fall. Back to school drive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you 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 well established in the community, giving back to the community, um, putting things on for the community. I wish everybody that that you know. I mean, I never thought about giving, doing that stuff or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I just, but I grew up poor, and 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 it's not me. It's it really all the people that come into my restaurant and and. That's where when you got uh, that's where, where where you got a platform like you got a platform yeah. like I got a platform because I'm an author and because my restaurant people people uh, uh help support because there's no way I can afford to uh, uh, get nobody like four thousand tours. That's a lot of tours. So you know, <laughs> but all the people that come to the restaurant, uh -huh. they'll come and drop tours off or turkeys and hams. Uh huh. And stuff like that. Love you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going with Donovan or Brian? Hey, Donovan. Yeah. Donovan, right? Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Nice to meet you yeah, too. Everybody heard his story a little bit, man. That's so, okay. you know, that, that, and that's what your platform, my platform, you know, yeah. people in that position, I think we, we, we got an obligation. We should do that. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? I mean, definitely. we're blessed. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah, bless, help bless everybody that's in the same situation. Love facts. As much as possible. As, no. as, as much as possible. Cause that, that's my thing, man. Anytime we able to do something, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Cause why not? Why not just do it? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing that we can't do. Like, and then if it take more money, all it's not gonna take is more of us. Cause if we could, more of us can bring more money together. Is you know it, what I'm right? It, right. And, and <laughs> so, with the with the community, you know, when you're in that situation, uh, people don't mind helping, helping out. out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't. They and all you're doing is right all you're doing is providing a a a. a, a a Platform. place to drop it off to, at. To, to do it. You know what I mean? At the restaurant, you know what I mean? Drop off gifts. Drop off turkeys. Last year, I think we had 40 turkeys and 36 hams. Uh-huh. You know, we cooked them all. I had turkeys all over the damn city, man. Word. Every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we had, we had turkeys That's every dope. damn way. That's dope, man. Man, the first time I think I did a Christmas toy drive, it was like, it's on, it's on YouTube. It was like six, seven years ago. Eight years ago, probably, man. It was just the dopest thing in the world. Yeah, it feels be good because you can see some of the you kids. Know you know saying? they're not. You know if they didn't get nothing from there, they're not gonna get nothing. You right. know what I mean? You could you could tell. Yeah, yeah. Someone that come up there, they're, they're so not happy. Yeah, they're not gonna get nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, what's the future plans, man? What's the future plans? I know you say you want to write some more books. I know that's one of them, but um. What would the next company be if you was gonna start another company within like the next two years? Well, I've got two, but I don't know if I wanna uh, really do any more companies. Everybody wants me to run for city council. I don't know if I wanna put myself in that frame either though. Don't because it. one person on city council is not gonna do nothing. It's a, it's a majority vote. Okay. Say. Hey, nice to meet you, hey, nice to meet you too, man. All right, all right. But um, you know, uh, and one of 
I, I, I might do it. You know, my problem is speaking, as you can tell now, I don't really like talking in front of, and I'm there's nobody even here, but I know people see me on, on I don't like, I always had a fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. Could write, could write a mean story, but talking in front of people just isn't my forte. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I really, really think about doing the city council thing that everybody wants me to do for two reasons. One, is because I do care about my city. You know what I'm saying? I, I do. It's where I live. Let's go. If you don't care where your house is like, Let's you know what I mean, where you live at, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Right, right. Now, of course, I'm not sound crazy. I don't care about North Carolina. I don't live in North Carolina. You know what I mean? But uh, this is where I walk at every day. You know what I mean? So, you know, I care about Hampton. And then the other thing is, plus, you know, somebody that's been a convict and gone through what I go through, become on the city council, you know, that give, it'll give other people, you know what I mean, that same, you know what I mean? And it'll take some of that stigma out, you know, unless I get on the six o'clock news of being <laughs> choking somebody out or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> what was that bear? Uh, <laughs> guy's name, you know, that, you know he want, don't want to do nothing like that, but, you know. That's big. Hampton is not not like it was. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. Nobody wants to live in Hampton no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Businesses don't want to come here. They don't get a break. Especially small businesses. You know what I mean? The violence, you know, I seen on the news, you got a 52% chance of uh, uh, getting away with killing somebody here. 52% chance. Wow. It was on the news, I don't know, a couple months ago. You know, they're breaking down the cities. And, and Hampton was worse. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think Virginia Beach, they had a 78% uh, uh, solve rate. Hampton had a 48% solve rate. Wow. So, you know, when you don't, when people don't want to live in the city, then that, that creates problems with taxes and this, this, that, and another. You know what I mean? You know, the city is just, I don't know, I've got a lot of views on that. But, you know, I mean, I was part of the problem too at one time. Don't get me wrong. No, yeah, you know, it, it's just... It needs some help. Yeah. You know, but one person ain't going to do it by the The mayor, he's just a face. It's a, it's, you know, it's a vote of seven. So you got to have four people that's agreeing. The, and that's the council. Yeah, you got to have four people on that board yeah. to agree to one thing to make any kind of change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know. Get the people in the building, the right people in the building. Um, it, it, it's, it's difficult because a lot of the people don't, they, they, they don't mess with that. You know what I'm saying? And you also got to look at this. You know, one thing, I'm a, they call me the rain man because I always deal in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. People don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get on city council for a job that you only make like $20,000 a year. They got ulterior motives. Cool. You know what I mean? I mean, what? Uh, 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 you're not spending that kind of money to get a, city, a seat on city council if you don't have some kind of ulterior motives. That's just my views. You know what I mean? If I run, it's because I want to to help. Not to get, you you know what I mean? Right. I mean the, the math don't make sense. Spend a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to get on a board. You know what I mean? Then it's all the stuff behind the scenes they must be doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to be. Got to be. You know what I mean? Definitely. I, I, I guess we about to find out because uh, I think you said you about to run for city council. I know. I don't know let's, for sure. Let's I, go. I, I, no, I don't. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying. I, I'm thinking about it though. Let's go. You know I mean? Let's go. I'm back. If everything falls in place, I'm it would. I mean, of course, the only thing, thing to bring up is my past. I don't care about that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's no secret. You know what yeah. I did. I did what I did. It is what it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know. You know. Uh, Everybody got a past. It's just yeah. know about mine. Yeah, you know, you know about yeah. You got a past too. You a lot of us should have been in cuffs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No question. Probably about. 75% of the population should have been in cuffs. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's going to be a major that's going to be major right there, man. I'm going um I'm going to keep um hollering at you about that. Every time I see you, I'm going to be like, "Let's go." You well, I, that all depends on a couple of things. <laughs> okay. If I get if I get to slow up and have some free time, I will. If I okay. don't, then uh, you know. Okay. I won't. Okay. But I will I do believe that you will bring, you know what I'm saying, um a good change just because, you know what I'm saying, you was able to to beat the odds, you know what I'm saying? You can help more people beat the odds and get this um, city. And you have businesses going on, you know what I'm saying? And you're successful with your businesses and they're they growing and they're they getting better and better. And I think you will be able to help the city get better, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I said, like, I'm, I'm pushing you with that. Well, that's a goal if you do it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, uh, if you uh, don't like talking in front of people, so that's really putting a sacrifice in to do something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Be out of line, because, you know, every time I do... TV interview back in and I see my news what'd he say because I speak like country and 
mm-hmm. hood mixed together. It sound like uh, <laughs> it sound like I'm, I can't even stand understand myself sometimes when I'm on that. Okay. Sound like a guinea man. Oh, and Glock's on. What did he just say? <laughs> nah, you did great today, man. This was dope, man. This was dope getting a bill with you, man. Find out about these books, man. Um, wonderful, man. And, and I'm glad you made a, the, the change from the negative to the positive side. You know what I'm saying? And, and you build it in the community. And you, you're showing people the way. You know what I'm saying? And you changed it. You're changing the narrative out here. That's, that's my main important reason to bring you up here today to show the world. That you know what I mean. We can all do this together. Let's go. You know what I'm saying. Let's keep pushing. Let's 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 do better for Hampton, so Hampton can do better for us. You know what I'm saying. And um, people can want to be here. You know what I'm saying. Have a business here. Yeah. Because yeah, I know I know you love having your drink. You know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. Yeah. Like you, I know you love having your shop open a couple, every day of the week. You know what I'm saying. That you open. Oh uh, yeah. Seven days a week. You know with the economy right now, yeah. I I think it's gonna slow down because of gas prices and the, the war and all it's that. Crazy, right? I hope it'll go to recession. I wasn't around for the last recession, so okay. I don't know. They call it a Great Depression or whatever okay. when Obama was in, but I wasn't here. Okay. You I know. Remember. Yo, you remember that? Was you out here for it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I don't I don't remember that, but you know. Uh, I mean, the media, man, the media. Everything has doubled down there. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, crazy. Yeah. I mean, everything, uh, food. Yeah. Is is doubled almost. Yeah. You know, when you go to the store, you know what I mean. I know. I know. Everything is almost double. So they just hitting us in the head, man. Look, they just gave out all that money. Now they just hitting us in the head, man. It's just they playing with us, man. You know, yeah. what I mean? they just playing with us. I mean, you raise. I mean, you raise uh, minimum wage and and wages up. <laughs> But then you just raise the prices on everything. <laughs> so it's not like you did nothing. Yeah, yeah you ain't did nothing. You know what I mean? With some more. Yeah. We have to really, you know what I mean? You I really mean, Chick fil A starting out $15 an hour now at Chick fil A. But a burger costs with fries and that damn near $15. Yeah, that's you know yeah, what I'm saying? So good. it's not the wages aren't with inflation right now. Right, right. You know what I mean? You got to work two, two or three jobs. So you got to create some type of. Man, there's so many people getting money out here and they not even working no job. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. It's mm-hmm. like so many ways to get the money now. So you, know, you just gotta find other ways to be able to create some create some funds. You know. And um, the city alone is giving out a whole bunch of money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's people getting money from the city right now. The city helped me when COVID first hit. Yeah, yeah. I was the first person they gave a grant to. They gave me a ten thousand dollar grant. Look the first that. when COVID first hit, I shut my restaurant down about. Two months before the governor did, I didn't need the governor to tell me nothing. I did it on my own because that last book I wrote, I had all that time as about a doctor, so I researched for four years writing this book. And although the book, the the pandemic, the book's not about the pandemic, I predicted it. So it was a timeline. I predicted it happened in 2018. I missed wow. it by a year. Everything that's in that book about the pandemic happened is weird. I'm not no prophet, but it was crazy. Well, uh, but uh, so. I took it serious. I shut down. You know what I mean? It was rough the first two months when COVID, but I learned quick. I'm just going to do to-go food. I'm going to open up later on and do family meals, you know, and deliver. So I made it through because you had to adapt. If you don't adapt, you're going to get run over. Love facts. Yeah, I mean, no question. So the government does, I mean, the city does have grants, you know what I mean? I Love appreciate facts. them, you know what I mean? They, I was the first one they had. I think they had fifty ten thousand dollar grants that they gave out to small businesses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it helped me. I never got to get the big uh, loans that a lot of companies got maybe because of a, a long story with the IRS uh, over my Obamacare. I, I should have got it, but mm-hmm. everything happens for a reason. I was blessed where I didn't really need it anyhow because they were just giving money away to people. No offense. Yeah, they were giving away a lot of money. You know, unemployment and all that stuff. But I worked through the pandemic, but. Uh, yeah, you're right. They de- they definitely did do that. Yeah, the city the city has all the cities, man. They have they have the budgets, you know. And and a lot of us don't know nothing about the money because we're not in the city make meetings. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We're not there to figure out what's going on, what's new, what's happening. You know what I mean? So if we get in the buildings and we um we in these meetings, we can, we can figure out what's available for us. Yeah, because you know COVID I mean? was no joke to a lot of businesses. Yeah, for COVID real. was no joke, man. You know, I, I tried ducking for two years. I wore a mask all the time. I was one of the last restaurants to open back up to mm-hmm. serve the public, you know what I mean? Because I did to go. But, you know, I, I realized I didn't have no choice. I just was careful. I still caught it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I caught it in Jan- this past January when it was Omicron. I think the new variants aren't as bad. Because, right. I mean, even though it laid me down for me, it wasn't like, you know what I mean? All right. You know, it wasn't as bad as... Uh, uh, 
I thought it was going to be. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't go, I didn't leave. I probably went out the house in two years, maybe six times. Wow. And I went wore a mask all the time, but, you know, and then I ended up catching it anyhow. So. Well, word. I'm glad, I'm glad you was able to beat that, you know? Um, yeah, it wasn't that bad, though. We're going to keep beating the odds out here, you know? Um... We're going to be making a lot of things happen, man. You got the the, the back Call. to school drive Call. coming up in fall. You got the Thanksgiving, I mean, mm-hmm. situation coming up in November. <clears throat> and you got the Christmas situation coming up, you know what I mean, the toy drive. So you got a lot of big things coming up for the um, and out this this year. Um, I know we're going to have an event coming up here soon. It's going to be boxing. Hold on. Uh, uh, who's that with? Because uh... this one? What's his name? Uh, Joker. That used to be his nickname. Brooklyn uh, Joker? The, the, the DJ? Or? No, no, no. So he came to uh, uh, a guy that I used to know from other thing back in the day. Uh-huh. He came by for, for the kids, boxing for the kids. Oh, word, word, boxing for the kids. Is, is, is that what this is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be boxing. It, really, this this one that's coming up is um the USA, USA um, boxing. So this is this is legit, like, USA boxing. We gonna have an event coming up soon with um, Spirit. Spirit does um, PhoenixReborn.org. It's a nonprofit, mm-hmm. and um, they got boxing things going on and um, things like that. But we gonna have an event here. It's gonna be um, boxers. It's gonna be um, DJ battle. It's gonna be a dance battle. It's gonna be um, a few performances. It's gonna be. Um, a big situation going on. When is that going to be? That's going to be June 18th and 19th. My birthday weekend. You making any flowers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bring, bring one by the restaurant. I got you. And put it up there. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be um USA boxing event. It's going to be crazy. And we hooked up with um, Cornflake too. When he do the street, the street fights. The street beef fights. Uh-huh. And um, they start a podcast here. So we're going to have an event, another event going on with Cornflake too, June 4th. Cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, see, the stuff like that, that's, that's good, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had a guy named Kevin uh, Costas uh-huh. a couple of years ago, called Coach. He used to come in a restaurant. He was younger than me. He wanted to start a football team up. Wow. You know, these kids didn't have nothing. You know what I mean, they, their yeah. parents couldn't afford to get them jerseys and nothing like that. So, you know, we raised, a, I did a fundraiser. We raised a couple thousand dollars. And uh, first year, I don't think they won one game. Bad news, Bears. <laughs> Second year they went to the Super Bowl. Loud facts. Yeah, so he passed away. Rest in peace, oh, man. man. He was a good dude, man. He was about the kids, man. Yeah. He was he was probably about five years younger than me, but he's from around here though. But doing stuff like that, man, you know what I mean? Help kids out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know. Yeah. It's a good thing, definitely. Anything you do to help other people out, always, you know, always a good thing. Yeah. That's how we we gotta try to do as much as that as we can, man. It's been dope building with you, man. Um, can't wait to have you back up on here. You know what I mean? Let them know your progress. And um, you know, I'll be checking you out at the spot. And I'm going to need a copy of all these books, too, because I don't have none of these books. You don't yet. have none? Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to need a copy of all those. And I, and I need the one that you forgot to bring, too. So you got to let me know my Yeah, time. I thought I brought that one in here. Yeah. Um, so if you want something good to eat, come out to Fertitta's from 7 to 3. Uh, any day of the week that's in uh, South Language Square Shopping Center uh, right next to Detail Law. Everything's homemade. Everything's from scratch. There's no uh, uh, heat lamps. It goes straight to the table. Best waitresses around. And uh, if you need your lawn done, just give us a call. 757-291-8848. And uh, if you want a good book, all my books are on Amazon. Or you can come by the restaurant and get them signed by me personally. Loud facts, man. And we out of here, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. You already know, man. I'm going to have you back up here, man. Okay. Loud facts. Go make sure y'all check out the restaurant and make sure y'all go get a book because I'm going to get all my books today. And definitely, man, um, if you need that long cut, holla at my man. And we out of here. Radio.